So before I start this video off, I want to make sure that you guys know this is going to be a two-part video because there's a lot of information involved. But as I digress, let's get into the video. What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to yet another video. So in today's video, we'll be talking about the ways that I actually make my YouTube videos. So a little bit of a deep dive, I guess, if you guys are familiar with YouTube and watch YouTubers and want to know what they're doing behind the scenes to make these videos happen so you can watch them and learn something from them. Let's go over those things. I recently posted a video to TikTok, Instagram Reels, and YouTube Shorts. I've gotten a lot of information from those views and understanding that it's something that people really want to know about because YouTube is a great platform to get your information out there and be able to showcase what you know and hopefully help other people out with your knowledge but what happens in the background of all of that how do you make that video for them hopefully that I can be the guide for you to start your journey making those types of YouTube videos like I do for my own channel so first things first I come up with the idea for my video and it will take me a couple days maybe a couple hours maybe a couple minutes and I'll write it down real quick step number two is to get my idea onto either my phone and try to imagine what I'm gonna have to do to make that video happen. So whether that be location, setting up lights, what I'm gonna say, how am I supposed to portray the idea to you guys? Step number three is to find the location of where I want to film or locations that I want to film. If it's a vlog, I know that I'm gonna be walking around or positioning the camera in different ways to captivate the audience and get their attention a little bit more. For a informational video, I guess I would sit down right here. Step number four is to choose the camera that I want to shoot with. This may be important to you or not important to you. This is just something that's important to me because I do have several cameras to use and they all have slightly different looks to them. Once you really get into a craft you start to realize that whoa one camera is actually better than the other or one thing is better than the other. Which one do I choose to really relay the message even further and that's gonna be what type of camera that I want to personally use. Now again you don't have to do that but that's what I choose to do. Step number five is to set up or get to the place that I need to film. So for this scenario for this video I'm sitting in a setup that I set up. So I have a Nanlite 60B hitting me the subject at this angle at a 45 degree angle or something similar to that and then I have two Elgato key lights right behind me and one's directly pointing up and another one is directly pointing up over here and it's kind of giving me this like nice silhouette behind me kind of giving me a little bit of edge light on both sides that's just kind of what I've come up with it may change who knows I'm just playing around with it trial and error now if you're outside the difference is is that you got natural light when you have natural light you want to make sure that you are filming in an area that has light now you don't want too much light because you don't want to blow out your footage you don't want to overexpose your footage. Now that all comes down to settings in the camera, possibly a ND filter on the lens. And we'll get into more of that a little bit later on in maybe another video. These are things that you kind of have to think about if you really want to make your videos stand out. Step number six would be to set it up. And all three of these lights have the option of downloading an app on your phone, kind of curating the look that you want and the brightness and the tonality of these lights for your video. Now, if you aren't there just yet, don't worry about it. It's just a process. It is definitely a process to learning lights. It's just something that kind of adds on to the stages of filming. Lights, camera, and action. Now between number six and number seven, there's a halfway point that I think that needs to be addressed and that is camera settings. Now I shoot in a frame rate that's called 24 frames per second. Movies have been using 24 frames per second for years. It used to be on actual film reel and it shot in 24 frames per second. So the eye naturally sees, in essence, 24 frames per second just in real life. So to kind of mirror that idea, that image, is to also have your camera set to 24 frames per second. It also gives a very cinematic look to your video and it bumps up the quality just a little bit higher than the people that are shooting in 30 frames per second and 60 frames per second or whatever frames per second that's not 24 frames per second if they're doing stuff 
like this. Now, everyone has their own style, and that's okay. If you like 30 frames per second, that's fine. If you like 60 frames per second, that's okay too. But to really tailor that look, personally for myself, I like 24 frames per second. Or if you want to be entirely specific, 23.98 frames per second. So once I get all of that stuff dialed into the camera, it's time to press record. So I sit in front of the camera like I am right now and I am filming. I'm talking in front of the camera. I'm explaining to you all the information that I want to say for the video. And after I'm done, I just press the record button one more time to stop the recording. Now you may make mistakes here and there. I'll even showcase some of these mistakes that I made within this video so you guys can see that you will probably just make a bunch of mistakes just like I do. It happens, we're human beings and it will happen. But get back on the horse and you continue on with what you wanna say. Another thing too is to look directly at the lens because the lens is you guys. You are looking at me and I am in an essence looking at you. You don't wanna look off to the side, you don't wanna look down, you don't wanna look up. Any other direction than directly at the lens, that's what you wanna look at because I'm directing my attention to you guys and making sure that you guys understand that I am paying attention to you and you are paying attention to me. So this is the way to really give that effect. Now, I know it feels Feels weird that you have to stare at a barrel into complete darkness which is the camera but that's how you have to do it otherwise you're not gonna be directing your attention to your audience I'm just gonna say the next step because I lost track probably eight or nine somewhere in between the next step is editing so I'm gonna make this a two-part video because it is going to be a long one. Hopefully you can digest some of this information before I post the next part next week. And that is the next step, which is editing. So we'll get into a little bit more of that in the next video. If you guys have any questions about this first part of the video, let me know in the comment section down below, and I will try to answer those questions as best as I possibly can. Stick around for part two. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you are not subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button. And as always, it's been real. Keep it real. You know what? it is. Deuces.